about to get invisible armor in Minecraft or how to get extra inventory space super easily. Here are 38 secret things I guarantee you didn't know about Minecraft. In this super old snapshot, pumpkins have a truly crazy secret. If you spawn in pumpkin stems that have grown further than eight stages, they'll start to turn into this weird furnace plant. This happens because the textures got totally messed up in the files, but I prefer to imagine them growing those fire flowers from Mario. In any official update before 1.8, you could use this illegal fire item to craft chainmail armor. The weirdest thing was that you couldn't even get the fire item, so it was a completely pointless craft. You can get invisible armor in Minecraft. Right now, I'm completely invisible! And all I'm wearing is this suit. To get this amazing armor, all you have to do is type this command and give yourself 100 armor points, the same as a full set of netherite armor, except totally invisible. Brown mushrooms, dragon eggs, and end portal flames all actually give off light. And the respawn anchor will slowly emit more and more light depending on how much glowstone you put into it. Which I think is awesome! Zombies are pretty harmless on their own, but when there's dozens of them, they become harder to deal with. So it's absolutely terrifying that every night there's a chance of a literal zombie apocalypse spawning and attacking you and any nearby villagers. If you somehow manage to bring a hoglin through a portal to the overworld, it'll turn into a super gross looking corrupted zoglin. These things will roam around menacingly attacking any passive mob they see. Don't worry me, I'll be angry too if it looked like that. They actually behave almost exactly the same as a vindicator named Johnny, a secret mob that definitely doesn't keep me awake at night. Here's Johnny! Ah, Grandma, what? If you build an end portal in this specific way and fill the northern frames in last, the end portal will generate in completely the wrong place. If you want it to actually work, you have to place all the frames from the inside. But I think this looks way cooler. If you type flower into the creative menu, it'll only show you these ones. If you want to see all of them, you need to put a hashtag in front. For some reason though, typing hashtag blocks only shows you these four nether blocks. I think I'm having an identity crisis. Think mob farms are the best way to get XP? Think again! Getting achievements actually gives you experience each time you get them. So if you manage to find all the nether biomes, you'll get a nice reward of 19 levels. Speedrunner Feinberg even used this in his all advancements world record to get the levels he needed to enchant his trident. This dude's got like five of my brains in there. Each block in the game has a hardness level that tells you how difficult it is to break or blow up, and it actually hides a pretty crazy secret. If stone has a hardness of 1.5 and obsidian has a hardness of 50, what do you think bedrock would have? A million? Infinity? Turns out it's actually minus one. I'm sure there's some crazy nerdy code reason as to why this is, but come on, look at me. I've got no idea. Did you know there's a way to get extra inventory space instantly? Simply turn touchscreen mode on and use your number keys to put some items in the crafting grid. Then click off your inventory and you've got four extra slots just like that. Unfortunately, this was patched out in 1.19, but you can still use this feature in any other update. Splash water bottles seem like the most useless item in the entire game, but they're actually the only way to put yourself out in the nether. You can also use cauldrons for this, as water placed in them won't disappear in the nether. This even works the other way around, letting you place lava underwater. It's not quite as helpful though. But this isn't even the only way to get fire and water to mix. The other method requires bubble columns and fire charges. If you place a ton of soul sand and the water like this, they'll bob around in the water as if they're not just totally breaking the laws of science. Dripstone technically counts as an entity while it's falling, meaning you can grab it with a fishing rod and yank it midair. This doesn't have much use outside of really messing with your friends, but it also works for sand, gravel, and best of all, TNT. Back when beads were added in 1.15, there were actually two secret textures hidden in the files for extra honey items. The first was for a crystallized honey item, and the second was this yellow block called the wax block. These items never made it into the actual game, but it does bring the concept of crusty honey into my head, and I don't like that. Slimes can actually let you duplicate name tags. Well, technically at least. If you use one on a big slime, the name will actually pass down to the smaller ones, and since these things can't despawn anymore, you can use them to really get your message across to a friend. Oh god, there's so many of them! You see these weird little scribbles on the end crystal? It turns out if you look super closely, they actually kind of spell out Mojang. Powder Snow has made mountain biomes actually kind of dangerous now, and Ain't nobody got time to wear leather boots out here. But there is another way to deal with it. Next time you venture out to the snowy slopes, grab yourself a flame bow, as any powder snow you hit with a fire arrow will instantly melt and disappear. Glow Lichen actually has a secret use I guarantee you didn't know about. It can actually completely block water from flowing, just the same as signs or pressure plates. But more importantly, it can do the same with lava and won't ever burn, even though it's a plant. Hmm, I give up. Sea pickles are one of my favorite plants in the whole game, but a lot of people seem to forget you can place them outside of water. They won't give off 
of light anymore and lose their little pickle stem thing, but they do make for a nice decoration or extra piece of color somewhere in your build. Oh, and you can place paintings behind them too. What's even crazier than this though is that you can also place lily pads outside of water too. Kind of. As long as the block is waterlogged, you can place them down. This means they can go on trap doors, scaffolding, slabs, drip leaves, leading to some really cursed effects. They can also be placed on ice, which is like, I guess, waterlogged? I really don't know anymore, man. Oh, and speaking of lily pads, the direction they face depends on the location of the block and not the way you look when placing them down. It changes block to block and seed to seed, meaning you can never predict which way a lily pad will face. You know how you can preload crossbows with an arrow or firework? Well, it turns out you can do this in bulk. Fill your inventory up and then spam drop and fire the crossbows to turn yourself into a literal machine gun in Minecraft. If you look closely, all of the regular tools in the game have a regular brown stick for their handle as they're all made with overworld materials and wood. But the netherite tools instead come with a darker crimson handle, reminiscent of what a crimson stick would look like. It's nothing crazy, but it's cool to see the attention to detail Mojang sometimes shows. In 1.19.2, there was a glitch that allowed you to completely bypass full damage. If you jumped from 35 blocks or higher and hit crouch at exactly the right time, you'd be able to walk away like nothing happened. Ow, it's really hard though. Obviously, we know that piglins in the overworld turn into zombified piglins and hoglins turn into zoglins. But what do you think piglin brutes turn into? An armored zombified piglin or some super power mutant boss? Nope, just a regular zombified piglin. He gets to keep the axe though, so he's got that going for him, I guess. You can actually use enchanting tables as a way to catch intruders in your base. Anyone trying to snoop around and steal your items is probably going to be invisible. But the enchanting tables, magical powers, actually show you there's someone nearby by opening up and facing straight towards them. Grandma, what are you doing in my house? Oh, right. Ah! Every single item in the game has a shape that goes from the bottom left of the item slot to the top right, from tools to fences, name tags, and even amethyst shards. That is, except for the echo shard, which does the exact opposite and faces the other way. I love this feature because it shows that the item really is an echo of the regular items and could even come from some strange alien world. Ever wondered what causes those creepy cave sounds to play? It's actually not random. It relies on this section of the F3 screen called Mood that increases over time when you're underground and decreases when you're near light. When it gets to 100%, a random cave sound will play and it'll reset back to zero. There are actually four secret paintings hidden in the game files that you can't even get normally in the game. The paintings are earth, wind, fire, and water and can only be spawned in with this command. Apparently, they were only added in to promote Pocket Edition, but I really hope they get added in fully eventually as they're so much cooler than this. Tinted glass is the only glass block that actually drops an item when you break it normally. I guess the amethyst enchanted it with mystical powers. Most people only place carpets on, you know, the floor, but they can actually be placed in way more places than you realize. Above string, water, slabs, buttons, other carpets, crops, and even fire. Although that one might not go too well. There are so many potions in the game now, so many that I barely even remember how to craft half of them or any of them. But that's not an issue for this secret potion, literally called the uncraftable potion. As the name suggests, you can't craft it or even obtain it in survival mode. Drinking it does absolutely nothing, but it looks kind of pretty, I guess. Something you can craft that I bet you don't know about is the end rod. I've spent so long raiding end cities for these, but it turns out you can just craft them with some chorus fruit and a blaze rod. The more you know, I guess. Tipped arrows are more useful than you realize. You can use harming arrows with a piercing crossbow to deal tons of damage to multiple mobs at a time and even collect the arrows after. And if you hit yourself with a slow falling arrow, you'll fly super high when using a riptide trident, allowing yourself to float for miles with an elytra. And speaking of elytras, remember when firework rockets didn't exist so we had to use punch bows to boost ourselves? Or am I just really old? You're old, son. Dad, subscribe!